Good morning. Darcy's been working on a compilation of our hay feeding area renovation. So I thought I might jump in this morning and uh, and kind of give a, a preview uh, description of what we're doing in this video. I've tried to feed in a various number of ways in, in the hay feeding uh, for winter time. We've done the conventional rings and it's usually a muddy mess and we sacrifice a whole lot of ground to uh, to put these rings out because they'll get uh, they'll get thick with mud around the edges of them and we have to move them and then we have to re-sow that ground and we're not very good at it honest to goodness reclaiming the uh, the sacrifice land so usually we have a nice bunch of little crop circles with pigweeds and and odds and ends uh, we've tried feeding on flat rocks uh, We've tried feeding in the uh, in the wooded areas uh, as to not sacrifice the, the open pastures. We've tried unrolling it uh, a bale at a time and each have their advantages and each have distinct disadvantages. And so it never really fit our, our profile here. So about five years ago, I started investigating this fence line feeding thing and got to watching it and uh, yeah, it showed a little promise. <coughs> and then also uh, kind of noticed that, that every old barn you go into in this area, you know, all the, the, uh, the older structures have hay racks. Most of our old tobacco barns had a hay rack in the middle of it, so it would do double duty. Once you got the tobacco um, down and stripped and empty, you usually use that barn for a, for a uh, cattle shelter and feeding area because you could put the hay in there and it would be close access. Uh, one of the arguments or one of the explanations that uh, I heard in, uh, when, when discussing that particular uh, thing was that, well, you know, it was uh, the hay was in square bales, it was stored in the barn, it was convenient it uh you know was on a smaller scale you've got the waste to consider you know uh the old timers would have to scoop out the the uh the aisles and everything and do something with the manure and that's that's all uh accurate it um it, it is is certainly so but so anyway i got to looking at uh watching a few of the uh, segments from Eden Shale Farm up in, uh, in Lexington and, and UT has done a couple of uh, segments on the fence line feeding and everything. But I kind of thought, you know, I, I kind of like this barn thing. And so uh, we decided to take one of our hay barns and convert it into a feeding area. And uh, uh, so one of the first considerations is uh, these critters, they make an incredible uh, accumulation of, of waste matter and everything. So uh, the first thing to consider is our flooring. And so I, I packed gravel in here, put it down, put a little pug, a little fine, super fine limestone on top of it. Um, and was very, very careful for the first two years about scraping it out to try not to to uh, break the hard pan. And I'd still get a little bit of gravel every once in a while. Um, we had a little issue with a loader valve and, and kind of broke into the hard pan one winter. And after that, it was, uh, it was uh, a, uh, it was a, a bull rush. I mean, it, that, that place just kept degrading and degrading and degrading. Originally, I was going to try the, the gravel surface for about a year, and then I was going to put it on a concrete floor uh, where I could scrape it easily. And uh, the transition between evaluation and application, uh, concrete went sky high, and it just wasn't cost effective to do co uh, concrete. So I started looking into some other methods, and Eden Shale, once again, was doing some... Uh, doing some evaluations of different alternative flooring methods. And they came up with this tire cylinder thing to where they're putting down tires and filling them with rock. And the, the idea is the, the, once you scrape it, the sidewalls of the tires will kind of keep the, the blade from chipping down into your gravel and breaking into it. 
uh, the, the tire itself, the circular uh, shape, holds the, the uh, lateral forces when the cows push down so they shouldn't, they shouldn't uh, push it down too awful bad. So um, we, we uh, originally started out with a 36 foot rack um, and we had about 30 mama cows at the time and, and so we, we cut back the original feeder panels that I used were, um, they were less than, than adequate for the span that I was using. So they, they kind of get pushed around and bent a little bit. So we went to some heavier duty panels. Uh, we wound up selling off a few of our mamas. So we, we backed it off to 24 cows and you're doing raw math. You're thinking, well, I've got, you know, We've got 30 cows, they need approximately two feet per cow, you know, so I'm leading 70 foot of space for them to eat. And you're assuming they're all gonna eat at the same time, which is not something that we, uh, we found. We found that they come in and shift. So unless the rack is completely empty and they all come in at once, once we reload it, uh, they tend to come in uh, one group at a time, maybe, six or eight cows at a time. So there's no, uh, there's not a lot of competition for the space. So we cut back on it and we're doing 24 feet plus the 10 foot on the end. Uh, we found that, that doing this allows us to feed once a week. Um, so we, we basically more or less, I think it's about eight days right now. So we're, we're loading the rack about every eight days so we, we have to allot one period of time in our week to do that. Um, that way I'm not feeding every day. While I was doing the renovation, I was rolling hay out of, across the creek and uh, I was having to go unroll a roll of every evening. And it was time consuming. You know, I, I think this is uh, a lot better use of our time doing it once a week. Um, they, uh, the cows, they tend to, to do better. There's, there's research out there that, that talks about, um, you know, how much body condition uh, an animal will lose depending on how deep the mud is. So, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of interesting stuff out there that, that we've kind of uh, cherry picked the things that, that seem to apply to our little operation and utilized and some things that, that um, we learned, you know, just didn't seem to be terribly important, you know. And like I said, our, all of our other methods, unrolling was great, uh, except it, uh, you had to do it every day. And in the winter time, by the time I get home from my, my public job, it's dark. Uh, you know, if it's wet, then you've got that high impact tractor going out there and you don't really see where you're going or what you're doing. And so it, it's a wonderful, uh, you know, it, it, it allows you to, to kind of build up the tilt that you land, you know, put your, uh, spread the manure out. There's a lot of good advantages to rolling out hay if you're uh, in a situation that, that you can dedicate a, a little bit of time every day to do such as that. Feeding in the woods, uh, didn't really see a big problem with that, except, you know, the manure just builds up, builds up, builds up in the mud and everything. So you still got the cows just trotting around. So I think they lose body condition. You know, you're, you're uh, pretty well gonna have to have a four wheel drive tractor to, uh, to navigate through that. And, uh, you know, feeding on the flat rocks. Uh, I've got plenty of flat rocks. I got plenty of rocky ground that I could feed on and kind of build up the, the, uh, um, the soil doing it that way. But uh, unfortunately, all my flat rocks are far, far away. And uh, I've got some here close to the house and I've tried and it's still just a muddy mess. And, and it turns into uh, a, a chore. It, it turns into to a lot of uh, a lot of deep mud and a lot of reclamation and things like that. Usually, the soil that you're building up is too rich for for ordinary grass to grow. So you gotta you gotta kind of amend it and things like that. So uh, this 
We, uh, we scrape it out about once a month. We bought a manure spreader, so we're putting the, uh, uh, you know, we're putting the organic matter back on the fields, putting the potash down to hopefully try to renovate our fields. And uh, it works pretty good. Uh, it's an incomplete project. I ran out of tire cylinders. So I've got one area that, that I've got to go back and get some more, and that's going to be basically my accumulation for my manure stack. Uh, bought some bin blocks. We're going we're gonna to build an area that we can, we can store our manure and uh, make it a little easier about uh, keeping it, uh, collecting it to put in the manure spreader. Uh, there's still quite a bit of waste every once in a while in the beginning. You see they, they reach in and pull it out and uh, kind of tromp it down, but you can kind of see their, their hooves are dry. Um, you know, they're, they're pretty content. Uh, we built a nice lane coming in so they don't have to slog in through the mud to get out here. Um, it's just a lot, of, uh, a lot of good things. We're trying the corn stalks this year to try to, try to offer some bedding in the, in the area before they, before they come in and kind of uh, allow us to blend that to make it a little bit easier to scrape. I'm excited to see how the, how the cleaning is going to go. Uh, this, what you see accumulation here is just a week. Uh, amazes me how much, uh, how much accumulation uh, 20 cows can, can produce. So uh, again, you know, she may use this, she may not, but uh, I thought I'd give kind of a, an explanation of, of what this, uh, this segment's about as far as renovating the floor. Um, I think, you know, uh, you know we're, we're an STO, we're a small time operation, uh, but I, I love experimenting and I love seeing if, uh, if we can find new and innovative ways to do things um, other than just doing it uh, because that's the way we've always done it. Uh, you know, I, hope, uh, I hope you're entertained, I hope it's informative. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. Um, feel free to try to contact us and, and we will discuss any specifics um, that, that you have uh, questions or, or comments about uh, what we did and why we did it. Um, we'll kind of keep you informed when we, go to, when we go to clean it out how the uh, tire cylinders did as far as uh, keeping the, the floor integrity while we're scraping. You know, so we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. I hope you enjoy this, and and uh, there's a lot of footage, so I don't know what she's clipped out and what she hadn't, but it um, certainly a pleasure. This is this is where I enjoy getting out and doing these things, and it, uh, it it's a it's fun to work these puzzles out. So. Um, Thank you and have a blessed day.
is about right there. I've got it pretty close. On this side over here, so I need to, need to cut a little bit more over that way. We'll see what we can do. Here's my finished grade so far. I've still got some more to do out there on the on the front, but I'm thinking I'm gonna cut me a couple of cedar posts and lay down to kind of do a little bit of a wall over there where those side gates come in and kind of build that up too. Um, I've got this side done. And I've got the manure out of this side, but I don't have it down to grade. So I think I think I may uh, put some hay out in the lot for the girls to keep them out of here for another day. I've got to haul some, deliver some hay and do a few other little things. So I may jump back on this to later this evening or tomorrow one. But uh, I think it's looking pretty good. I'll give you a shot from the other side and let you see my messy work side. But uh, so we're about 10 inches under the, uh, the hay level. I may get me some treated two by sixes or something and put down the wall over here to, uh, to kind of keep it from pushing out. So that wall has pushed out a time or two, so we're going to get that fixed. So, to be continued. All right. Feeding the girls this morning. Well, I'm still working on the barn, so run rolling a little bit. <clears throat> it's uh, gonna kick it a little further, I guess. And enjoying it. For sure. I had a unroller for a year or two. And it did alright, but that old heavy tractor still made a big old mess. So. I just use gravity. Go. Zoom, zoom. 
don't know if that's everybody or not. It's close enough. Get them off my back till I get the barn done. We'll see you later. All right. So here we are. We've got uh, we've got our tire cylinders down. I didn't put geo textile underneath the tires on this end in the dry, uh, but I am using some old net wrap that we have accumulated over the past three years, kind of bedding the bottom of the cylinders with that and have been screwing the, the where they touch together, kind of attaching them to where they'll kind of link to one another while I'm doing the fill and everything. And hopefully that'll, that'll kind of keep them in the correct position while I'm driving over them, getting them filled up and everything. Uh, put a couple of boards on the inside of the wall on this lower side for the gravel to pack again so I don't push my wall out again. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to, uh, to get this done. This is 100 cylinders, so it's done uh, 15 by 36, and then 14 by 36 on the other side, and then a 12 foot probably 12 by 10 on that. So I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run short on my tire cylinders to, to do the landing area out there, but I'll probably go back and get another load here in uh, the next month to try to finish it. Cause I wanna put some of those bend blocks out on the end of that where I can push against them to, uh, to load the manure in the bucket so I can get it get it clean and kind of keep it from making a big old mess and digging in and everything. So uh, I'll let the camera run for a little while while I'm putting the uh, net wrap in there. And I see a couple of low spots. I'll probably, probably kind of adjust those as I go along as I go through my field and uh, get those evened out, let a little bit bed underneath them. And you know, some of the tires are a little wider than the others, more worn out, such as that. So they've got kind of an inconsistent, but it's, it's, I think it's close enough for cows to tromp around on. Okay, so I was talking about pinning these together. We're just taking deck screws and wherever they touch. We're pinning them together, just hold them in place, mostly for while we're uh, filling them in, but also to give them a little integrity. And tradition, I guess, the, the guys I watched did it. So anyway, that give you an idea how to do that. So we're uh, fixing to start filling. We got uh, our net wrap in a, most of this side over here. So one of us will start doing that and another start filling in, see how it works. got the key.
I got the uh, I got the crusher run topped off on this and got it packed down about as good as I'm going to get it. I'm uh, trying to decide whether or not I'm going to put the corn stalks down or let them pack it in a little bit with their feet before I do the corn stalks. So I'm still kind of up in there on that, but I'm ready for them to be over here and they're ready for us to be over here. We had a little bit of a storm this morning, had some pretty gusty winds, didn't have no damage, say nothing. And, uh, but the creek got up pretty doggone high. So we'll, uh, maybe the, it'll go back down. We had, we had about uh, two inches in about three hours. So it, it really, really shot down. But I had most of my rock inside the, inside the barn from last night. So I didn't have to, didn't have to fool with that too much. I gotta get my other rest of my panels up on the inside and keep them from banging the walls. We should, uh, we should be ready for them to come in. They'll come out the, the lane over there. I'm gonna cut them off of this nasty mess right there. So I get it repaired and fixed. So, all right. All right, we'll see you.
bit number five. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness, is it good? Is it good? Head down a little bit here. here. <laughs> oh my goodness. You gotta think. Huh? Apparently, corn stalks makes you a jumping buck. My George, what do you think? My goodness. Except for old goober down there. That don't want to be. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh. Yeah, well, seemed to like it pretty good. Sure seemed to like it. <laughs>